This airplane has a huge history of service and restoration. The airplane dates back to 1944 when it was built in Boeing's Kansas plant. And it left the plant with serial number 69729 and it was assigned to the 875th Squadron in Mariana Islands. This aircraft was called a rotation airplane. In other words, it wasn't assigned to any particular crew, but if a, if a crew, if their own air, assigned airplane was unserviceable for a combat mission, they would take the spare airplanes, and that's what this was. And, but boy, it saw 37 combat missions over Japan. And we have a little series of photographs here and this is an actual picture of this airplane. This picture is truly amazing because it's actually dropping bombs over Japan. Those are 500 pound bombs and that's pretty much her whole load there going. The next picture we have here is China Lake and it's the B-29 area and there was a whole bunch of planes that were sort of stored there and they'd be dragged into position so they'd people would shoot at them in bombs. But these ones never actually got shot at, they got cannibalized. And the Lowry folks went there and they, they took the best one they could and all the parts they needed to finish one up and they trucked it to Denver. And I think there was 10 truckloads to get it to Denver. And it was an all volunteer crew that took the time to put her back together. And this all started in 1984 when they recovered it. And here's the initial crew and reassembling the airplane in, in Denver. Here's volunteers winching the wings into position here, about to bolt on a wing. And these guys here are setting the vertical stabilizer, putting that in position. There are tough planes. Here's a landing gear being installed. The wing is cribbed up on pallets. These guys are greasing wheel bearings. And then here's some wheels being installed with a hammer. And here she is mostly together. Still needs a lot of work. And here's an engine being fitted. And the guys that are sitting on top of the wings there, it's so hot this day that they're on top of mattresses. And they're waiting to pull the engine back into the wing. You can see the shape of the leading edge of the wing going into the back of the nacelle. And this guy, he is rebuilding props. The only propellers they could get were all bent. So they actually had a jig and straightened them. And this is their little prop shop here in the shade. And they straightened the propellers and fixed all the blades in their fantastic restoration. And they had to make four propellers. And this here is the first time the airplane was towed on it, the first time it rolled. And she's all together and just fantastic looking. And here she is today. The restoration continues. There is a team of people working inside and out on this airplane. The most famous plane from the beginning of the Second World War produced by Boeing. And over here is Boeing's plane they produced at the end of the war, the B-29. And they made a lot of these. That is a big airplane. The B-29 Super Fortress. Let's read the sign. It's a pretty big sign. A very heavy bomber, the B-29 Super Fortress, revolutionized World War II era bombers. The Super Bomber could carry a much greater bomb load and fly faster than the Army's B-17 or B-24 heavy bombers. Equally important was its increased range, over 1,000 miles fat further than the B-17. The B-29 was also equipped with a pressurized interior. This allowed the B-29 crews to carry out longer missions such as the droppings of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, helping to end the Second World War. The museum's B-29 is known as T-Square 54. It fought in the Pacific Theater during World War II. The museum's B-29 fought in the Pacific Theater during World War II, flying 37 bombing missions with the 875th Bomb Squadron in the 498th Bomb Group of the 73rd Bomb Wing. The bomber was later converted to a KB-29 aerial refueling tanker. I think there's a ladder that comes down. It's made of wood. <laughs> sure would like to go in it though. That'd be cool.
see the serial number on her right there. So this one was, uh, the contract was put out in 1944 and it's number 69729. And it looks like they're missing their belly gun position there, whatever that big bump is on the bottom. Maybe that's radar. Huge bomb bays in this thing, two of them. And all of the guns were centrally controlled and remote operated by hydraulics. And boy, oh boy, does that cowling ever look beat up. It looks like the mechanics have been hitting it from the inside with hammers to take dents out of it. That's just rough. And this one I do not think is in flyable condition because these motors are have not been rebuilt. They look pretty original. Next to it is a B17 and it has been restored to flyable condition. These propellers are just huge. Yeah, that cowling is sure. They're beat up. But somebody made an effort to polish this thing. I kind of like the way the landing gear, the landing light pops out of the wing there. I wonder what all those things are in the wing. It sure looks like you can take the wing apart right here. Something tells me that all those little covers are holding bolts. You pop off one Phillips head screw and that'll get you that one side of a, a bolt that goes through and take, take the outer section of this wing right off. I wonder what these side blisters are because you could not open up the thing. It was pressurized, so there was no gunner there. This was some kind of an observation position. Maybe, you know, maybe a gunner did sit there and wherever they moved that sight, the guns would, would uh, automatically follow it. I bet you that's the case. I bet you that's what they mean by automatic fire control. Somebody has polished this thing. Like, that is polished. And they haven't done this part of it. That's original. And polished. <laughs> what a difference. This looks very corroded where the moisture comes around. And interestingly enough, that elevator is fabric covered. Fabric covered. And so is the rudder. more like what the what the B17 should look like the cloth there in between the guns which it was pretty cold pretty cold place to be wow and they've got uh, stairs going into this thing you can view it yeah they never got up there and polished that part I think somebody's just slowly working on it I wonder what they do with the paint. The paint looks pretty new on the insignias. I think they just get to the edge and they tape it off. You know, that insignia is actually a wrap. Oh, I hate seeing that. I hate it when they wrap planes. I was watching a museum down in California and they were in the process of wrapping all their planes. And they had some neat graphics and all, but wasn't a fan. Top of the wing's pretty dirty. Big airplane. Those tires are about three and a half feet tall. Okay, 
a neat little technique they did at the end of their the back edge of their skins. They put a little bend on it to keep the trailing edge up tight. There's quite a mix of different rivets going on here. I'm wondering if there's been a repair on this section right here, which makes sense because behind the prop, there's a pretty, uh, there's a lot more beating that goes on back there. This is a repair for sure because look at all the uh, pop rivets. This whole panel's been pop riveted in. Look at this guy took a shot at it with his gun and he missed four times. Wow, that's some pretty shoddy work. A little double rivet over there. The guy missed with his drill, so he popped the rivet in there to hide the hole. <laughs> Which is actually what you're structurally supposed to do. And here is an insignia that's painted on. That's for sure.